Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys so much for joining us once again. This is a fascinating topic, and so much of our reality, well, perhaps all of our reality, is something that is completely individual. Every one of us having a different reality, a different mindset, a different view of things, and yet, perhaps experiencing different things. So we see here simulation theory. Do we live in a matrix? And obviously our whole perception, uh, I believe, of the world has changed since the movie The Matrix. And that came out back in 1999. Curiously enough, there is a scene in there with Neo's passport and uh, the date on the passport was rather infamous one. You know, we now know it as 9-11. 2001 and that was a really curious little glitch in the matrix perhaps you know it's it's fascinating how a movie can change our reality or perhaps open us up to you know open the mass the public up to thinking about things in a different way of course people that have studied quantum physics uh, they've they've known things are kind of spooky, as Einstein had put it, in the world around us. And so you have people like Elon Musk, who believes our lives are just simply a program on somebody's hard drive. That's pretty wild. But at the same time, we could kind of understand things now. Are we really, are, <laughs> are we just avatars in a game? Is that what we really are? And so our higher selves, are they actually the ones that are playing this game? And when we tap into our higher self, is that where we really connect to true power? Because that is the one that can make changes in this universe. It's, it's all really fascinating to think about it. So are we the biological simulators or the simulated? And as we know from quantum physics, we see here, before observation, you have a wave spread out over space and time. It's just potential. It's, it's potentiality. When it's observed, boom, you got something that actually localizes in space-time. And space-time is one unit, according to what we have found. So... What do we infer from this? Well, inference of the observer effect. For anything to manifest in the physical universe, it should first be observed. That's a big statement. Think about that. You know, the door that you just used to walk into this room is not really there in one sense. The walls of the house around you, you know, if, you, if there is nobody observing them, are they there at all? Your dog. Well, yeah, okay, your dog has consciousness, right? So she or he is really there in all their cuteness. But the act of observation cannot occur without the pre-existence of consciousness. So the basis of the universe, the basis of everything is ultimately consciousness, which we can take some solace in it because if consciousness is all that there is, then there will never be a time when you are not conscious, <laughs> so to speak. The observer effect clearly implies that the physical universe is the direct result of consciousness. And that really goes along with what we see in so many of the mystery traditions and in many of the Eastern philosophies. And this is an amazing thing. Quantum physics tells us that nothing that is observed is unaffected by the observer. So the, the thoughts, the presupposition, the expectation of the observer actually has an influence on what is observed. That's powerful. So if we are expecting doom and gloom, that's what we're going to get. If we are expecting failure, that's what we're going to get. If we are expecting everything to go wrong, then how could we really expect anything to go right again? And if we believe that we are just simply 
cursed at birth because we were born into the flesh. If you believe in like the concept of original sin, are you not just putting yourself right behind the eight ball? You know, in so many ways. So those statements from science hold an enormous and powerful insight. It means that everybody sees a different truth. There is no one universal truth. As much as people want to basically push their version of the truth on everyone else, there is no one truth. Because everyone is co-creating right now you know, with what they see and what they expect and what they intend. So that changes things a lot. And, you know, obviously, you know, that could lead to a lot of chaos and confusion in the world as well, because we're not all seeing the same thing. We can be looking at what is perceived to be the same thing, but, you know, in effect, we're not seeing it in the same light. All of us have our own conditioning that we've gone through. We've lived different lives. We haven't all lived the exact same life. And that's part of the beauty of the multiverse that we are in. It's diversity. So we need to agree to disagree sometimes because the reality is we're not seeing the same thing, even when we're looking at the same place. It's really, it's the quantum perspective of reality. So the power of your thoughts are incredible. And so must we guard our thoughts a little bit more carefully knowing that so perhaps that's why astrology works and that it's part of the matrix that we are in and everything influences everything else and if everything is consciousness then the consciousness of the planets and the stars must be very powerful as well so are these incredible historical coincidences actually due to synchronicity mathematical probability there there are a lot of them Many people probably have heard some uh, interesting coincidences, perhaps when you compare Abraham Lincoln and JFK. Uh, there's tons of things that seem to be really unusual coincidences. So let's uh, take this. So as far as mathematicians and near miracles are concerned, Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest scientific minds in all of history, would have struggled to work out the chances of his own birthday, January 8th, 1942, Falling on the 300th anniversary of the death of another great scientist, Galileo Galilei. What's more is his death occurred on Einstein's 139th birthday, March 14th, Pi Day, where the calendar reads 314. Interesting, is it not? Um, there are so many different things as far as this uh, goes that really abounds. The tomb of Galileo Galilei in Santa Croce, Florence, Italy. So Stephen Hawking was born on the same day Galile Galileo died 300 years later. Strange coincidence. It's interesting. So political flukes. Romulus, the founder of Rome, the first king, first uh, emperor of the Roman Empire. His name was Augustus. And when the Roman Empire collapsed, coincidentally, the emperor who watched it burn to the ground was Romulus Augustus. So you got Romulus, who was the founder of Rome and the first empire, uh, the first actual emperor of the Roman Empire was Augustus. And then when the Roman Empire collapsed, coincidentally, the emperor who watched it burn was Romulus Augustus, the two of them put together. Curious, isn't it? And uh, of course, we don't really think, many of us, that it really ever left us. And, you know, perhaps we are still in the Roman Empire, so to speak the same system. How about Thomas Jefferson, a founding father of the United States of America, died on the 50th anniversary of the 4th of July. And so did John Adams. Following in the footsteps of this morbid tradition, fellow founder and president James Monroe died five years later, again, on the 4th of July. Interesting. Genghis Khan famously and violently rampaged through the Eurasian continent, and his direct descendant, Amir Timur, from 1336 to 1405, was the first ruler of the Turco-Mongol Timurid dynasty from 1370 until his death. On June 20th, 1941, Soviet Union archaeologists uncovered his tomb and found an inscription reading, and re remember this date, 1941, Whoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. 
According to Fascinate.com, two days later, the Nazis launched their invasion of the USSR with Operation Barbarossa. Interesting, is it not? So, you know, what exactly is that? You know, there's, there's just so many things that are very fascinating. And we have on, on November 30th, 1835, in Florida, Missouri, Mark Twain was born with Halley's Comet in the Sky which returns to Earth's vicinity every 75 years. By 1909, Twain had lived for 74 years. In his 20s, he predicted that his death, like his birth, the comet would be visible in the sky. He was quoted as saying, It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said, No doubt. Now, here are these two unaccountable freaks. They came together. They must go out together. Twain suffered a heart attack on April 21st, 1910, just 12 hours before Halley's Comet emerged from the far far side of the sun. Another strange coincidence, or is this all part of this matrix? And another head scratchers, the mass of the Great Pyramid is estimated at nearly 6 million tons, and if one multiplies this by 100 million, get the approximate mass of the Earth. Furthermore, the exact geographical coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza, and it gives it right there at 29.979-2458 degrees north, and the speed of light is, (laughs) as you see, the same numbers in meters per second. So is that another coincidence? What do you guys make of all this? Do you believe that we're living in a matrix? Are we living in a simulation? what is really going on. I look forward to your comments. As always, I invite you to join us on Patreon. Become a Patreon, support the channel, and also see some videos that don't go up on YouTube. And war, go ahead and support us on Ko-Fi as well. As always, my friends, stay safe out there. God bless and namaste.